Our DEM gives us information about existing site conditions on a 3D surface. If we look at our subjectives, we can quickly identify subjectives which are dependent on this information. For example, water will sit in low laying areas. Sunlight will only shine on the southern parts of a three dimensional object. And in order to determine lands with ridges, we again need three dimensional data. Another piece of information that is dependent upon three dimensional data is slope. Slope will give us information about areas that are too steep for development and areas that are best suited for development. The slope ranges we will seek is dependent upon the type of development. So in this case, we're looking for lands that are suitable to support some type of structure. In the ARC toolbox, we're going to navigate to the Spatial Analyst tools, to Surface, and then to Slope. We're going to drag and drop the Slope tool into the Model Builder. Up here at the top, we'll use the Connect tool and we'll use this MPDEM and connect it to Slope as an input raster. We can right click on Slope and choose Open and we can set more options. So for the output raster, I'm going to have this just output as Slope. For the output measurement, we're going to choose Percent Rise. And for the Z factor, we're just going to leave this at default. If we wanted to, if we were still in meters, we could add the 3.2808399 value here to convert it from meters to feet. But for now, we're going to leave it at 1 because we already know that it's in feet. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on Slope and I'm going to choose Run. Once it's done, I'll click Close and choose my Select Pointer. And then I'm going to right click on Slope since I didn't automatically add it to my data frame and choose Add to Display. And it appeared down here at the bottom, so I'm going to drag and drop it probably in between my Hillshade and my DEM. might drag it on top of my hill shade just so that we can look at it a little bit better. And we can kind of see by looking at our table of contents here in our data frame how the slope is broken down. And of course we can right click on slope and go to properties. Go to the symbology tab and we can change these values. Right here there are nine classes so if we click on classify we can change the breakdowns. So right now it's set to natural break so I'm going to change this to quantile and maybe I only want six so the first one probably make a two the next one will make a four The next one will make an 8. The next one maybe will make a 15. And then this one will make a 25. So I'm saying from 0 to 2% is probably going to be the most ideal conditions for my buildings because it's relatively flat. 2 to 4 is kind of comfortable walking slopes. 48 is still, you can still walk on it, but it's not as comfortable as 2 and 4. It's not the most ideal. Um, 8 to 15 is kind of difficult to walk on, but you can drive on it. Not ideal. 15 to 25, we're saying, is that's pretty steep. You could probably develop on it. It might cost some. You're going to have some retaining walls. and It's going to really disturb the landscape, but it's there. And then we're saying from 25 to 43, most likely no development unless you're going to put stilts in or something. It's just really too slope, too much slope. Can't mow it or anything. So once we have that set up, we go ahead and click OK. And we can see here our colors. So we're saying from 0 to 2 is ideal. 2 to 4, I mean, it'll work, so it's kind of green. 
48 is a little bit not as comfortable as 2 to 4, and 8 to 12 is kind of pushing it, and 15 to 25 is kind of sli kind of steep, and then 25 to 43, we don't want any development there. So I'm going to go ahead and click Apply, and click OK, and those changes should apply to our map, and we can see that we don't have any 25 plus percent slopes in here. Let's going to pan around and just look at our map, maybe we do in some areas. These are probably limestone outcroppings. So our site is mostly between the 0 and 8% slope range. But this kind of begins to show us which areas are ideal for buildings and which areas are not. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag my slope underneath my hill shade and I'll probably give my slope map a transparency of maybe 50% to make this a little bit more readable. I might play with my hill shade transparency as well. Maybe I'll decrease it to a 30%. Maybe I'll go to 70 to make it a little bit more readable. I think I might just leave it at 50% just have to kind of play with the settings until you get the desired map. 